planning to study in the UK or going to the US for a job or planning to start your business in Dubai? If the answer is yes and you wish to know the various intricacies of sending money out of India, you've come to the right place. I'm Karunya from Grow NRI and I'll help you understand all about LRS that is Liberalized Remittance Scheme. Here's a list of topics we'll be covering in this video. What is LRS? The limit and eligibility. For what purposes can money be sent for under LRS? Do you need to pay tax on remittances? Is LRS applicable on credit card transactions? What are the various prerequisites of making a transfer under LRS? How can you benefit from LRS? Let's start with what is LRS? LRS or Liberalized Remittance Scheme is a policy introduced by the RBI to facilitate smooth transfer of funds abroad by Indian residents. Let's say your daughter got into Harvard for an MBA and you need to pay her fees. So apart from being super super proud of her and wishing her the best for her career, we would advise you to understand what Liberalized Remittance Scheme is. The current upper limit of remittances is 250,000 US dollars, which means that you can send an amount of up to 250,000 dollars in a financial year without approval from the RBI. Any amount above this would require prior permission from RBI. There's no limit on the number of transactions as long as the total falls below this number. All Indian residents, including minors, can avail the scheme. Please note that corporates, partnership firms, HUFs or charitable trusts are not eligible. Moving on to the purposes for which remittances can be sent. Under LRS, you can send your hard-earned money abroad for various purposes, including paying for overseas education, medical treatment abroad, gifts and donations, making investments abroad, business trips, etc. Remittances are not allowed for purchase of lottery tickets, banned magazines, or margins or margin calls to foreign exchanges, trading in foreign exchange overseas, and other purposes mentioned in the latest RBI guidelines. We've attached a link to the same in the description in case you want a detailed list. Now on to a very important topic. Do you need to pay tax on remittances? Yes, you do have to pay taxes on the money you send abroad under LRS in the form of TCS or tax collected at source. What's more is that in the Union Budget 2023, the current TCS rates have been revised upward. These are the TCS rates according to different types of remittances. In case you're sending money abroad for education and you've taken a loan and the amount is 7 lakhs or less, you will not have to pay any tax. However, if this amount exceeds 7 lakhs, you would be liable to pay 0.5% TCS. Now, if you have not taken an education loan and are just sending your own money out for studying purposes, again, you won't have to pay a single rupee as tax till 7 lakh rupee limit. If the amount goes beyond 7 lakhs, you'll have to shell out 5% TCS. For an overseas tour package, the rate is 5% till 7 lakhs and 20% thereafter. If your remittance doesn't fall under any of these types, then you're liable to no tax till 7 lakhs and 20% above it. It's important to note that the increased TCS rates will apply from 1st October. The story is not as grim as it seems because the TCS you pay can be adjusted in your overall tax liability and can also be claimed as an income tax refund. This basically means that the TCS amount you pay can be deducted from your income tax, resulting in lower tax liability. Now you might ask, is the LRS limit applicable to credit card transactions? On 16th May, the Ministry of Finance issued a notification amending rules under the Foreign Exchange Management Rules to bring international credit card spending under LRS. However, However, in a recent circular, the government postponed the implementation of this change. What this means is that you can make payments outside India using international credit cards without having to worry about the $250,000 LRS limit. Furthermore, any international credit card payments of up to 7 lakhs will not attract any TCS. Debit cards were already covered under LRS and will continue to be affected by LRS restrictions. Next, what are the prerequisites for making a remittance under the LRS? To transfer funds under the LRS, you must have a PAN, that is a permanent account number and complete the KYC process. Moreover, you must have had an account with the bank facilitating the remittance for at least one year. Apart from that, you need a seven-figure salary, an 8,000 square feet mansion as well as million dollar sports car to make remittances. Just kidding, only a valid PAN card and bank account would do. Finally, let's see how you can benefit from LRS. Number one, investments. LRS allows you to diversify your investment portfolio by investing in foreign assets such as stocks, real estate, bonds and mutual funds. Number two, medical treatment. If you want specialized medical treatment which is not available in India, you can remit money for it under the LRS. Number three, travel. 
LRS enables remittances for all travel related expenses, whether it's tickets, hotel bookings, tour expenses, or a rented cruise to your dream destination. Number four, education. All education related expenses can be covered using money sent under LRS to make sure your loved ones focus on their studies and don't have to worry about anything else. Now let's do a recap of everything covered in this video through four mistakes you might make while remitting funds under the LRS. Mistake number one, ignoring the TCS changes. Now we all know taxes are about as fun as watching paint dry. But ignoring the recent TCS rate changes in the union budget 2023 could leave your wallet feeling lighter than a feather. Picture this, you're sending money for your dream vacation and suddenly Uncle Sam, or in our case, the Indian government wants a piece of the pie. So keep an eye on those revised TCS rates and plan accordingly. Remember, no one likes a surprise tax bill. Mistake number two, forgetting about PAN and KYC. Imagine this, you're all set to send a generous sum abroad for your child's education or a critical medical procedure. And just when you think you've got it all sorted, you hit a roadblock. No PAN, no KYC. It's like trying to board a spaceship without a space suit. To avoid this inconvenience, make sure you have your PAN card ready and complete the KYC process. It's a straightforward step that will save you from unnecessary complications when sending your money abroad. Mistake number three, using credit cards. Ah, the wild, wild world of international credit cards. It's like a magic wand for instant gratification. However, the rules surrounding them can be as tricky as navigating a labyrinth blindfolded. The good news, you can still swipe your way through international adventures without hitting that $250,000 LRS limit for now. But be cautious, the government plans can change faster than you can say, charge it. Mistake number four, waiting until the last minute. Procrastination might be the unofficial national sport, but when it comes to LRS, waiting till the 11th hour can lead to unnecessary stress. So if you've been dreaming about that exotic vacation, planning your child's education abroad, or investing in foreign assets, don't put it off. In conclusion, while sending money abroad through LRS can open doors to exciting opportunities, avoiding these common pitfalls can make the process much smoother. So remember, stay on top of tax changes, keep your PAN and KYC in check, mind your international credit cards, and don't wait till the last minute. Your financial adventures abroad will thank you for it. And thank you for watching this comprehensive guide on LRS, brought to you by Grow NRI. If you found this information helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more insightful financial updates. You never know when you might need them. If you have any questions or need further assistance, please feel free to use the comment section.